good morning students uh, today we will discuss about the fuel cells now what are fuel cells in the fuel cell is defined as a galvanic cell in which the chemical energy is contained in a readily available fuel uh, oxidant systems is converted directly into an electrical energy by means of an electrochemical process in which the fuel is oxidized at the end so it's a system where the fuel is burned continuously and the uh, the energy liberated as a liber uh, as a um, uh, uh, burning of the fuel is uh, completely converted into mechanical energy then to an electrical energy now a fuel cell essentially consists of the following arrangement the fuel cell is a fuel electrode electrolyte or an electrode oxidant assembly in which the, at the anode the fuel undergoes an oxidation the fuel undergoes an oxidation at the anode and giving rise to an uh, oxidation product plus liberating an n moles of an electrons now in this system the um, uh, the fuel is burned and uh, the the burn upon burning the the energy liberated is converted into a mechanical energy then to an electrical energy so the from the one end the fuel is continuously supplied and the other end the electrical energy as well as the product of the combustion that is the carbon dioxide and water is uh, um, is taken out so at the cathode the oxygen gets reduced so now advantages of the fuel cell advantages is energy conversion rate is high because here the energy is not stored in the uh, cell and the energy is uh, the uh, supplied in the form of a fuel and the upon burning the energy is liberated and that energy is converted into electrical energy so continuously from one end the fuel is supplied from the another end the electrical energy is derived so the operates silently the fuels used are not expensive so it is a very less expensive uh, fuels are being used high energy density you can obtain the power density will be high or current density will be high and produces uh, the harmless byproducts so the harmless byproducts is the product of the combustion that is carbon dioxide and water that is the the byproducts which are getting from out of the fuel cell now recharge of the cell is not required so the uh, it is one of the very important uh, criteria of a fuel cell where recharging is not required from one side input side the fuel is supplied and from the output the uh, the product of the combustion is removed as well as the electrical energy is derived limitations of the fuel cells when you look into the limitation power output is the uh, moderate power output electrodes are costly and uh, the fuels are to be stored in the tanks under high uh, in the batteries but the fuel cells do not uh, need any charging so the uh, the advantage is that the fuel cells uh, uh, does not need any charging process now the electrodes are cheaper but it will be consumed anode is continuously consumed in the conventional cell and here electrodes are costly but not consumed and in the fourth difference the reactant and the products form an inter internal part of the batteries so the reactants and the products both will be located inside the batteries in the form of an active materials and the reactants are continuously supplied and the products of the combustion are continuously removed so reactants and the products are not the integral part of the fuel cells and the fifth uh, difference is the waste product uh, in a battery may be an harmful so the uh, uh, less eco friendly ba batteries are uh, less eco friendly the waste products in a fuel cell are harmless because the, the product of the combustion that is carbon dioxide and water is uh, not harmful Now the first fuel cell is methanol oxygen fuel cell. So the prerequisites for the methanol oxygen fuel cell. Fuel is a methanol, methanol uh, added with sulfuric acid, and an oxidant. Here is an oxygen is an oxidant. Electrodes are made up of either platinum or platinum electrodes or in graphite electrode. Inert electrodes are used, and electrolyte is a the sulfuric acid. 
sulfuric acid, dilute sulfuric acid is used as an electrolyte. Now in this uh, fuel, methanol oxygen fuel cell, the methanol is mixed with the uh, appropriate amount of uh, uh, dilute sulfuric acid is inserted into the um, anode and uh, once the methano uh, methanol is inserted into the anode, a methanoate anion will be formed and that methanoate anion will start moving from anode to cathode. So in order to retard the diffusion of this methanoate anion, a membrane is inserted close to the cathode to diffuse the uh, or to retard the migration of uh, methanoate anion coming from anode to cathode. Now the oxygen is supplied at the cathode. Now as soon as the oxygen will be supplied at the cathode, methanol mixed with uh, uh, 3 to 5 normal sulfuric acid is uh, supplied from the anode. So the construction is the uh, it consists of a platinum uh, or an uh, graphite electrodes made as an anode and cathode the oxidant is an oxygen which is supplied at the cathode and the fuel is a methanol methanol is mixed with the sulfuric acid is inserted from the anode so once the uh, uh, the methanol is inserted from the anode you know very well the methanol get oxidized in presence of an oxygen now the uh, the methanol uh, will convert first in the form of a methanoate anion to in order to uh, uh, retard the diffusion of uh, or slow down the uh, uh, migration of methanoate anion from anode to cathode a membrane is inserted close to the cathode now the reaction uh, in order to uh, so at the anode you know that methanol is inserted now the next fuel cell is uh, solid oxide fuel cell and it is generally called as an SOFC. So this is also referred as a high temperature fuel cell. So where anode material is a nickel doped with yttria. So nickel, uh, appropriate amount of nickel is doped to an yttria doped yttria stabilizer zirconia YSZ. YSZ is yttria stabilizer zirconia. It's a powder. In this powder, appropriate amount of nickel is also doped, 5%, 10%, 15% likewise. That material is made it as a, in the form of an anode. Cathode is a lanthanum magnetite, LAMNO3. This is uh, called as a lanthanum magnetite, doped with appropriate amount of strontium. So the anode is nickel doped with YSZ. YSZ is a yttria stabilizer zirconia. And the cathode is lanthanum magnetite that is doped with appropriate, appropriate amount of strontium. Strontium is doped to lanthanum magnetite which is made in the form of a cathode. And the fuel is hydrogen. Hydrogen is used as a fuel. And the oxidant is an oxygen is air or an, the pure oxygen is used as an oxidant. And the electrolyte is the, the yttria stabilizer zirconia. The appropriate amount of yttria will be stabilized with the uh, zirconia. That powder is used as a uh, electrolyte. And the temperature of operation of the fuel cell is uh, 600 to uh, 1000 degrees Celsius. So these are the prerequisites uh, before uh, uh, making or constructing the solid oxide fuel cell. So the anode, once again I will tell, anode is nickel doped to an uh, yttria stabilizer zirconia. Cathode is a lanthanum magnetite doped with appropriate amount of strontium. Fuel is an hydrogen. Oxidant is an oxygen. Electrolyte is a yttria stabilizer zirconia. And temperature is 650 to 1000 degrees Celsius. Now, when you look into this uh, construction, the anode material is placed and cathode material is also placed. In between a yttria stabilizer zirconia is a solid ceramic is used as an electrolyte. So both uh, anode, cathode as well as the electrolyte is the is in the form of a solid, porous solid. The, in this porous solid, hydrogen is supplied at the anode which undergoes an oxidation in presence of an oxygen. And when hydrogen and oxygen will combine and it forms a product, the H2 plus O2 and the given rest to an water as the byproduct. And excess of oxygen which is supplied at the cathode is removed from the another end 
and during this the combination of hydrogen the burning of um, uh, hydrogen uh, uh, and forming the water the, during this combination the the electrical energy is derived out of the system so the nickel nickel stabilized uh, nickel doped with a uh, pair stabilized zirconia is made in the form of an anode and uh, strontium doped with the lanthanum magnetite is made in the form of a cathode and um, in, the, in between the uh, yttria stabilizer zirconia is used as an electrolyte and the whole uh, um, whole assembly is kept in a uh, sandwich together and from the inlet of uh, anode hydrogen is inserted and from the inlet of cathode oxygen is also inserted now the reaction at the anode the oxygen will becoming oxygen undergoes reduction oxygen undergoes oxidation so the oxygen immediately converts in the form of an o2 minus and this oxygen reacts with the hydrogen which is coming from the and the anode and forms a water with the liberation of a two electrons so at cathode half molecule of oxygen the oxygen is coming from the cathode so the oxygen will react with this uh, formed two electrons and giving rise to an O2 minus. So at the cathode, oxygen undergoes the reduction by accepting two electrons and generates O2 minus. This O2 minus combines with hydrogen coming from the anode and forms a molecule of water and regenerate these two electrons. So the net cell reaction, if you want to see hydrogen, hydrogen gas combines with half a molecule of oxygen giving rise to an water. So the uh, it, uh, as I explained, solid oxide fuel cell is made up of an anode, which is nickel doped with the yttria stabilizer zirconia, and this is a solid ceramic, and uh, electrolyte is also a solid electrolyte is yttria stabilizer zirconia, and uh, cathode material is uh, strontium doped to lanthanum magnetite, and uh, at the anode hydrogen is. Uh, inserted in the form of an active uh, fuel and this hydrogen undergoes oxidation in presence of an O2 minus. This O2 minus will be generated at the cathode when oxygen undergoes reduction by accepting two electrons and giving rise to O2 minus. Now this O2 minus combines with hydrogens and forms a molecule of water with the liberation of two electrons. So uh, uh, it's a and uh, when you look into net cell reaction, hydrogen combines with an oxygen and forms a molecule of water. So the during this process, the the electrons will flow from anode to cathode, and that electron will be taken out into an external circuit uh, for the necessary. Um, uh, so advantages is that uh, since it operates at high temperature. And the uh, reaction uh, between hydrogen and oxygen gas, both reactants are in the form of a gas and they combine very easily. Gas can combine with another gas very easily and the, uh, that's the reason you get a high efficiency. So the high power efficiency or high current efficiency and long term stability and the long term stability of the anode cathode uh, active materials as well as uh, the uh, the YSZ that is the Atria stabilizer zirconia. Fuel flexibility. Fuel flexibility is that uh, you know uh, at the 650 to 1000 degrees Celsius the, the solid fuels uh, will become amorphous and uh, exist in the form of a porosity. In that porosity hydrogen and oxygen can easily combine and form a molecule of an water. So that is what is uh, the reference is called as a fuel flexibility and low emissions. So there is no, uh, of course, there is only the formation of water. So the, there is no emission at all. Huh? And uh, that is uh, what is called as low emissions and low cost. So uh, the only the cost is the hydrogen. Other than that, it's a low cost uh, uh, fuel cell. Now disadvantage is that the, since it operates at a high operating temperature, so operating temperature will be 1000 degrees Celsius, which results in longer startup times. So, in order to start this fuel cell, the, first the anode, cathode, and uh, the electrolytes will be heated to 600 to 
650 to 1000 degrees Celsius. That is, so initial heating will take up some time. So that is what is called as a results in longer startup times and mechanical and chemical compatibility issues. So the mechanical compatibility in the sense uh, the fuel cell uh, should be made up of uh, the heat resistance materials, the stainless steels or you know specially designed stainless steel should be uh, required. That is what is called as mechanical. And the chemical compatibility is that the stability of the anode material that is a nickel uh, and dope to yttria um, uh, stabilizer zirconia, as well as uh, the uh, lanthanum dope to lanthanum magnetite doped with uh, appropriate amount of strontium. So the chemical compatibility issues are the disadvantage.